DRM is digital rights management, or perhaps more accurately, digital restrictions management. And it is technological measures that people uh, place onto copyrighted material, in most cases, that is supposed to keep people from copying it, or playing it, or using that, that file in all the places that, that they would normally be able to do it. Digital, digital restrictions management um, technologies or digital rights management technologies keep you from being able to do that. The Apple iPod um, can play um, both DRM music and non-DRM music. Um, in the case of um, MP3s, which are not DRM, uh, the iPod can play those. But the iPod also allows you to play music that comes from the iTunes Music Store. When you buy music from the iTunes Music Store, Apple lets you play it on you, on your comp on on your computer and an iPod. Um, if you've copied your computer to your a piece of music that you've purchased from the iTunes Music Store to too many places, you'll no longer be able to use that. Uh, you'll no longer be able to use that piece of music on a new computer or in a new place. Since the beginning of the United States, it, we've had a concept of copyright. It's actually written into our Constitution. Copyright provides a balance between the creators of content, giving them incentives to, to create music or write books. It was understood from the beginning that copyright would be, exist for a limited amount of time. Nowadays, DRM provides more control for the creator than has ever existed before. It's now the case that even if a, a copyrighted work fell into the public domain, it would still be the case that you may not be able to actually make other uses of it simply because the technology still prohibits you from copying it or including it in other works. A lot of people give Apple a lot of leeway on this. They say that, that Apple has sort of the friendliest scheme because one of the things that they let you do, let you do, is burn the music to CD, um, which you can then play in your car stereo or on your portable CD player. And it's true that that's something that other retailers aren't allowing, uh, but Apple still attempts to claim even after you've burned the CD, they still claim that they have the rights to that music. So they could, in the future, uh, based on the agreement that you, you know, click OK on or sign with them when you download the music, tell you what you can do with that CD even after you've burned the music onto it. They, and the way it's phrased in their terms of service is really funny. I think it says it's, it's provided as an as a accommodation to the user, this ability to burn the CD. So it's not granting you any actual you know, legal ability to do that. So on October 6th, uh, people in my research group at the MIT Media Lab, the Computing Counterculture Group, and people at Harvard Free Culture and Boston Free Culture organized a party where people could bring their iPods and where we could install alternate firmware, basically alternate software to run on the iPod. Um, we, we called the party Irony, um, and we installed two sets of firmware. Um, one, one is iPod Linux, which is a version of the sort of popular Linux operating system that runs on iPods. And the other is Rockbox, which is uh, um, basically just a, a smaller operating system that is just designed to play music on digital audio players, like iPods, um, and on a variety of other players as well. So we, we uh, held the party so that people who w would had may have had trouble installing Rockbox or iPod Linux could bring their iPods in and we could help them. Um, Rockbox and uh, Rockbox, for example, is pretty easy to use, but um, installing it is quite tricky. It involves a lot of you know commands on the command line um, and you know 
maybe dealing with an installer that you're not uh, comfortable with or you know talks about devices but once you have an installer it's very easy to use so we, we felt that we by bringing together a bunch of experts in this or people that had done it several times we could help people that uh, were a little that, that, that wanted to use Rockbox or iPod Linux but who were feeling that it was just a little too tricky to get started with. Rockbox is an alternate firmware. Um, you can, you can, it, it doesn't remove um, the the existing capabilities either. That's the really nice thing. The existing Apple firmware is still there, so you can boot the Apple firmware just by holding down two buttons, um, and you can you can still sync like a podcast and that sort of thing. Um, I really the, the the best thing it does for me is it allows me to just drag my music on to the iPod as if it's a hard drive or if, as if it's just any other uh, flash device, um, and this is good because I get to preserve the file names of everything. So if I want to share my music with someone else, it doesn't have this, this randomly generated four-letter file name that obfuscates what it actually is. Um, I, 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 if, you, if you want to use uh, Apple to, uh, Apple's firmware, you have to use um, some sort of third-party um, software on the, 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 uh, the client uh, computer. But with this, you can just plug it in and drag anything you want over there, any music you want to share, which is kind of nice. So the party went very well. Um, the only thing that was a little disappointing was that there were a couple people who bought iPods for the party. Um, our point, of course, was to help liberate existing iPods. We don't want to help support Apple because what Apple's doing is DRM. And if you buy an iPod, you're supporting you're supporting DRM, even if you install Rockbox on it immediately and choose not to use it. So our point was to the goal of the party was to help people who had made mistakes in buying iPods and not to give people a reason to go out and support DRM by buying an iPod. So so in the future we'll need to be a little more clear about that. I mean I recommend the use of Rockbox because it is DRM free and because it allows you to uh, play formats like Vorbis and Flack and most importantly because it's, it, it turns your iPod into a machine that does what Apple wants into a machine that does what you or you know a community of free and open source software developers want. Um, it reconfigures the power relationship between you and your technology and even if you're not a programmer and don't take advantage of that, of that you, 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 can, you will benefit from the freedom that leads to a better development pro uh, process and ultimately to, to a better product.